Hey everybody, Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com here in San Diego, California. So today I have a vintage Vespa, kind of the last of the vintage Vespas if you know vintage Vespas. This is the P-Series Vespa. In North America, they imported these from 1977 to 1981. This is the P-200E. It's got the electronic ignition, uh, oil injection, it's got a battery in it. And the issue with this scooter is it's been sitting for about two years. And if you know anything about gasoline powered engines, pretty much let it sit without use. Uh, you're gonna run into some troubles with the gas gumming up the carburetor, the fuel system. Obviously, we probably have a dead battery. Um, I'm assuming this scooter ran before it was parked. Uh, I don't know, I'm just going into this blind. You're just following along for the ride and I'll show you everything I do to try to get this back up and running today. So whenever I have a customer drop off a Vespa that's been sitting for a while, even a modern one, first thing I do is check out the fuel in the tank or what remaining fuel may be in the tank. So pop the seat, got the flip cap, gasket's kind of falling out, but that's pretty normal for that era. Ooh. And the tank looks really clean. The gasoline looks pretty kind of yellow orange and there's not much quantity left in there. I would say hmm, maybe a quarter of a gallon, a liter of gas. Um, it's not the worst gas I've smelt and there's definitely no rust in the tank. It's pretty clean, which is a, a good thing. The scooter's been inside, hasn't been exposed to the moisture, but the gas has this very distinct, I guess it's like a varnish smell as everybody likes to explain it. Um, just kind of stale gas. Uh, with a quarter tank of gas or less, I would just dilute this gas with fresh gas because it's hard to dispose of gas. I mean, pretty much the best thing you do for it in an environmentally way, you know, is to dispose of is probably burn it. So um, based on my experience, the gas is still probably good enough not to run straight through the motor, but uh, be heavily diluted with fresh gas. So we'll start, go ahead and top off the tank with fresh fuel kind of transfer this from our gas truck that we have on site. So just I'm gonna put a gallon of gas, which uh, the fuel tank capacity is just under two gallons or about two gallons on these. Uh, the other thing I, I checked out in there is there's a brass vent tube. I kind of went in there and touched it, made sure it wasn't loose. If that vent tube was loose, that's inside the tank, uh, usually you just want to replace the fuel tap. Kind of watch the scooter, uh, make sure it doesn't start leaking all the gas out. Sometimes that happens. Um, a lot of the rubber components in the fuel system, especially on these older Vespas, it, they shrink. I mean, if this gasket was new, it would actually stay in place right there, or you may need to use a little grease. Um, right here, we're about, uh, I got almost a three quarters of a tank now. So that's all filled up but the gasket doesn't stay in place. To me, it's not really an issue. Uh, still looks to be in good shape. If you're looking to replace it, uh, Scooter West part number is 0002319. Uh, the ones we have are pretty high quality and they're exactly fit to fit in there. Uh, you can use a little grease to hold in place. Uh, just make sure it's kind of set off to the side. One tip with these style gas tanks, I tend not to like to fill them all the way up. So going up to about three quarter tank is probably more appropriate. You're gonna have less gas kind of run out. Um, I can see the oil sight glass in front. That's for the oil injection system found on these um, pretty much the late 70s and all the early 80s uh, Vespas that are large frame sold in North America. They had the oil injection. And I still see oil in there. Definitely weeping some in the frame. Uh, well, the next thing, let's just see if there's any chance of starting it. I'll tell you one thing about this. This is an original ignition switch and it's been busted for a long time. I'm not telling you how to steal a Vespa, but pretty much a screwdriver does the trick. The first thing I noticed, there's no tail light or brake light, so you know the battery is shot. But um, just keep in mind with all these vintage Vespas, the ignition system never relies on the battery. It's pretty much all vintage Vespas. They don't need the battery to start. The whole ignition system is its own magneto with its own coils. So a lot of people think, oh, I need a battery to get it started. No, you don't. 
the later ones did have electric start. Obviously, it makes it a little easier if you got um, the electric start to kick it over. Uh, we'll turn the fuel on. So I'm going to turn it all the way to reserve, which is facing pretty far all the way, the lever facing to the right. Uh, different types of fuel taps for different, different models. Um, the US ones have a pretty fragile one if it's still there. Most of the time, people replace them with the European style lever. So got the gas on, I'll pull the choke. And we'll give it a swift kick, see if there's any chance. Compression's really good. Nothing, I'm just not having the easiest uh, time kicking it while it's up on this lift here. Um, so I'm gonna shut the fuel off. We're gonna check a couple things. So ignition's on, there's no kill switch on the right handlebar. Pull the cap off. And this is just a handy tool to have on hand with this, this scooter and it's a uh, tool LT. It's a combination 13 millimeter for taking off the wheel. 11 millimeter, uh, that's used kind of extensively on the engine. So you could take that, that, any of the nuts that hold the engine together, that's about all that's 11. And then the 13 16 is for the spark plug. So if it's a 200 cc motor, it's gonna take a long reach plug. Uh, typically recommend a BR7ES from NGK. If it's the 125 or 150 cc, uh, P125X, uh, a Sprint or a Super, it's going to take the short reach plug and that would be a BR-A7HS. Um, looking in there, it's pretty, no wonder why the compression's so high. It's pretty fouled up with a lot of oil. Let's just kick it through. And I see a little bit of mist coming through. Make sure you don't have the spark plug cap close because if you spark right there, sometimes it could be a bad thing. Um, but the gap is pretty gooed up right now. So I'm going to start with a new spark plug. One thing about these spark plugs, they have two different types of electrodes on the top, or not electrodes, terminals. Um, this cap actually uses the, the threaded style, so you can unthread that. So here I'll use like a little pliers or an Epix. Just grip on that aluminum uh, terminal. You can dispose of that, not needed. And it will fit right into the cap. And a lot of people are concerned with gapping these plugs. Um, it's six tenths to seven tenths of a millimeter. Uh, typically out of the box, if they're brand new, it's not gonna be an issue. But we're gonna ground this. I'm gonna actually look at it. I don't think the camera's gonna catch it. I know the ignition's on it. I wanna make sure I'm sparking. And it's pretty bright in here, but I do see a spark. So we're, I think we're doing pretty good. And usually go about a half turn. Uh, once the plug seats, I spun in by hand, then another half turn. It's usually the, the crush, the, um, the ceiling washer. So let's try it again. I'm actually gonna leave the choke off. Nothing. I think we're gonna need to check out the, the carburetor. No life. We know we're getting spark, but I bet you those jets are pretty clogged up. So we'll go ahead and leave the, the fuel off. I'm gonna go ahead and raise the scooter here. And this is the air box right here. We're gonna get to the carburetor. All you need is a basic flat bladed screwdriver. Uh, later ones, somebody or somebody may have replaced them. It could be Phillips head screws as well. So get those two caps off with the two screws and then we'll pop the cap off, kind of lever it off. It's got a good gasket on it. That's And some of my prior videos, I've kind of showed how to completely overhaul the carburetor. So um, if you're wanting, you want to see details, I'd suggest just going on the Vespa Motorsport YouTube channel to search in the channel and you could find uh, rebuilds, both of the Stella the LML Stella and also vintage Vespas. They're all pretty much the same downdraft carburetors. Go ahead and 
and remove the two screws that hold the air filter. All this stuff looks pretty original. It does have a fairly new carburetor. You'll just tell by the style of it. Just to show you two different screw types for the um, air filters. Standard screw with like a cheese head on it. And it's got this big shoulder screw on the rear most fastener. So, And I can tell it smells pretty varnishy. Um, on the back of the carburetor is a little rubber plug for the mixture. I'm going to go ahead and pop that out because I'm going to allow some fuel to spill out of the fuel line just to see how the fuel flow is. So I'm popping this little rubber mixture screw cap out and it's pretty hard too. It's probably a good idea to replace it. A lot, a lot of times it's just missing. Uh, it kind of keeps the motor cleaner if you leave it in place. The fuel tap is off right now on the closed position or C. And this is the banjo for the fuel. And it's kind of squirting some fuel. You may want to have some rags handy. Let's just see how the fuel tap's operating. So I'm going to pull that single screw out. And they have these fiber washers that seal it up. And let's see how it looks when I allow the turn the fuel tap on, see if we have some flow. Oh yeah, it's flowing pretty good. It's flowing really good on reserves. So I don't think there's any problem with fuel flow. Uh, that's also a good idea to do that, just to, to um, kind of clear out the lines of any old fuel. Uh, the next thing we're going to check, since it's off, we're going to go ahead and pull this carburetor top. This is the float top. It houses both the fuel filter and the float. And there's kind of an awkward angle, but you can, it is possible to get a flat blade screwdriver or even I think an eight millimeter wrench on these. This is a Spaco replacement carburetor. So it's probably been replaced in the last 20 years, is my guess. It's a longer screw in the front. And the rear screw is gonna be a little small, shorter screw here. There's also a washer on there, so keep that with the screw. Go and lift that out. And it's dripping some fuel. Um, it looks pretty clean. I can definitely tell the fuel's pretty old. And I'd get the best way to clear that out. So you could use compressed air, it's gonna blow the fuel everywhere. Another option is take a really clean, like these shop towels, they don't leave behind much lint or any type of lint, so um, you don't have any chance of really dirtying up the jets, but it looks pretty clean in there. You know, once I soaked up that old fuel, kind of doing the lazy approach here. We're not actually removing the carburetor. Because in the past I've showed how to you know, overhaul the whole carburetor, pulling out. But this is just seeing what we need to do to get this back up and running. And it looks pretty clean. Kind of wiped out the inside in there. So I think we're okay there. So one more thing I do want to check out on this is we're going to check the fuel filter. There's kind of a sediment bowl combination fuel filter on the top. Obviously be careful not to stab your hand when doing something like what I was just doing. Pull that screw out. Oh yeah. So the screen came out with the rubber gasket. There's some weird little chunks in there. Probably from the fuel line maybe? I don't know what that's from. It's always a good idea if you have the carburetor part, you may not need to replace all the gasket, but just having a gasket kit on hand is always gonna be helpful. I can already tell we're going to want to be replacing some of the gaskets, such as this one in the cover. It's just pretty distorted. So we went ahead and have one of these ready to go. 154, 754 original Del Ordo gasket kit. Um, so that sediment that's in there, I'm kind of curious where that may have came from, but you know, it looks like I think Carver is ready. got some, six, Oh, you know what it is? It's actually paint from the spray paint job on the scooter that's just in there. So it all came out pretty easily. 
and also you could spray through the needle hole. I don't think I'm going to actually take the, the float needle out. We're just going to wing it, make sure it doesn't flood. Uh, this is your fuel filter right here, so you can clean that out with, with the carburetor spray. Both sides just like that, and same with the cap. There's two gaskets we want to get out of here. So depending on the era of carburetor, if you have the original Del Ordo carburetor from the 70s or 80s, it's going to use this paper gasket that's like a ring. If you have this newer carburetor top, you're going to use a rubber gasket. And the way you could telltale is you look at that little um, boss. It protrudes a little higher on the ones that use the rubber cap. And then for the top, cap there's either a fiber washer or this aluminum crush washer the later style uses aluminum crush washer and the early style will use the fiber washer so a lot of times people get that mixed up or i've seen uh, several instances where people use both gaskets and adding extra gaskets never a good solution so um, we'll go ahead and pop the little fuel filter back into the place It's a little bit distorted, but I think it's still going to do the job. And then the new gasket, just drop that in there. Got the crush washer on top. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to torque this all the way down by holding it in, in my hand here. But there we go. Got it pretty close. And I find the needles usually hold up pretty, pretty good, but if it is pretty old or if it's really varnished, yeah, just replace the needle. Or if it's flooding out, um, definitely may want to do that. So we're going to go ahead and drop that back in. All right, so go ahead and put the, the cap in here. If it was really varnished up, I would also question the choke jet, which is actually located underneath the float bowl. And on the comprehensive carburetor rebuild videos I've done in the past, I've taken the carburetors all the way down to every every little part. So you can see the angle's kind of funky when you're uh, trying to tighten these screws. They don't need to be super tight, but give them a good little uh, twist. And then this one on the top, get a little tighter. You could replace this gasket, might as well, since I do have the, the kit. So there's a new fiber gasket, looks a little different, but it's the same diameter. You pretty much match up the, the diameter of the gasket. And then there's also a small fiber gasket on this end too. You could usually pry it out with a little razor blade or a small screwdriver. So I got that gasket out of there. And in your kit, just go and find the match and gasket and we'll put the fuel banjo back in place. You can start with the flat blade screwdriver. I'd re recommend having a combination wrench to snug it up. I can see the fuel lines looks to be in pretty good shape. It's nice and flexible. It probably was replaced a couple years ago so I don't think there's an issue with the fuel line. So I went ahead and tightened that. And the last thing I'm going to check, or there's actually going to be two more things I'm going to check here. Let's pull these jets out. A little green. So just using a flat blade screwdriver. So the first smaller jet is the idle jet. Larger jet stack is the main jet. So we'll pull those out. Ooh, yeah, there's a little bit of green on there. So. The carburetor uh, cleaner will come in handy. I already have some on the rag just from. That green, you may want to use like a little uh, bristle brush to kind of uh, clear that residue that's on the jets off. And I may want to use a, cop a piece of copper wire to kind of uh, push through the jet openings here. So I'm kind of cleaning them out here. So. 
Uh, that looks perfectly clear for the main jet, so we'll drop that in. And all the side holes, I have a little bit of green buildup, but uh, the jet that's usually questionable is going to be your idle jet. And I have safety glasses on. Sometimes you can get the straw and kind of direct it right down to center, see how it Yeah, I see it jetting out of the two holes. So I think we're gonna be okay, so. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna check, got 11 millimeter socket. Sometimes, ooh, yeah, they're pretty loose. The carburetor is just kind of, from operation, I find they come loose. And you don't wanna over tighten them. I'm using a quarter inch ratchet, just kind of a little flick with a wrist is about as tight as you want to do it. If you have a torque wrench, about 11 foot pounds. So, seems pretty good there. Um, let's just see if we have any luck starting it. You can leave everything off. Um, keep in mind, that it's a little more dangerous running it with no air cleaner, but a lot of times I want to choke, choke the engine sometimes to get it started. So we're going to go ahead and turn the fuel on. And since I flushed out the fuel line, the carburetor bowl is getting a nice fresh shot. I'm kind of watching the carburetor, make sure if the fuel overflow or the needle's not working, it's going to be dribbling down. I also look at these uh, caps. Well, they have new gaskets, but make sure they're not weeping any gas because it will cause your Vespa to always become flooded out pretty easily. And let's just turn on the choke, see if we have any luck starting it. I know I have a spark, I have ignition on. And if you're having a little bit of difficulty starting it, if you're extra careful, you can put your thumb over it to choke it off even further, so. Ooh, yeah. And that's pretty normal, that's gonna be pretty smoky. We got a pretty good choke. I uh, have the choke off right now and it's already got a pretty good idle. So pretty smoky and that's not alarming at all. Uh, the headlights working, both the high beam and low beam because they do run off uh, the, the alternating current of the flywheel, but you can see I don't have any brake light or tail light. So we'll go ahead and put a battery in the scooter next. Um, gonna turn the fuel off. And turn the ignition off. Uh, the fan, the evacuation fans, kind of get rid of that smoke that's in here. Probably not the best thing to breathe. So go ahead and assemble the air filter. Put the air cap, the little top hat uh, rubbers are all in intact. We do sell a complete rubber kit for all those little pieces of the air box. If any of them are falling apart, but. And I'll put the mixtures plug in after I take it on a test ride because I may want to make some minor adjustments. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pull the cowl off. There's these little levers towards the front. Kind of lift the cowl out of the way. So somebody already put a sealed battery in here. The battery strap's still in good shape. So we're gonna go ahead and check the battery, see if there's any voltage present. 1.8 volts, that's not good. So if this battery had about 10 volts, I'd probably try charging it. I think it'd be worthwhile to try to save it, but uh, if it's been sitting here for years with only, you know, one volt or something that low, it's likely never going to be, be able to recover. Um, so somebody put this, uh, what is a CTX or a YTX7 LBS battery. It's actually the size battery that's in the Primavera and Sprint. Well, it fits in a tray, but it's not really the most ideal battery for this scooter. Normally they had a a maintenance style battery, which are kind of like a, they're kind of a pain in the butt and they leak acid and that's why there's corrosion in the wheel on the battery tray. I don't really recommend those older style batteries anymore. I mean, there's some applications where you don't have an option. 
Um, but the best replacement option for the P series, whether it's a PX or one of these older um, uh, P200Es that just need the battery for the lights. Uh, this BB9B is a really nice battery. It pretty much replaces the original Uwasa maintenance style battery. That's a, a y, YB9B size battery, but it's the exact same form factor, but in a sealed version. And you know, there's also other technologies of batteries such as uh, lithium ion. I really don't recommend them on these vintage Vespas because they don't really have good charging systems that would work well with those, um, that technology of battery. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and put the strap in place on the bottom and put the, the battery just like that. These are ready to use. They're all factory activated and uh, filled up with acid. So the battery strap sometimes takes a bit. And if you're really struggling with this, one tip is put this battery strap in boiling water and it will be very supple and soft. And keep in mind, you do need the longer battery strap. There's two different lengths of a battery strap. Sometimes I'll use a flat blade screwdriver to slide it on. You can go from the bottom too. And you can pretty much hook the, with your screwdriver. And just get it right in. There you go. So now it's in place. So these have a pretty nice universal terminal. You can do it from the side or the top. Probably do it from the top would be just fine. And go ahead and connect the positive first. Make sure the terminals don't have much corrosion on. That's always pretty important. So you got the positive in place. And just to show you, that's a new battery. Check the voltage again. The 12.9 volts, that's pretty much a fully charged lead acid battery. Have the ignition off so the lights aren't gonna come on or anything with the other terminal. If these terminals are in bad shape, I'd just replace them. You can just crimp new ones on. And while you're in here, maybe a good idea to inflate your spare tire. Uh, you can get to it from back here if it's in the right position or you may need to take the, the wheel off. But let's go ahead, we'll watch the voltage. Put my meter in, in the strap so I kind of watch it. And I kind of want to test everything out. This is already has an upgraded uh, newer style fuse. Those original fuse holders are pretty temperamental. So 12.9 volts, we're going to turn the ignition on with our screwdriver. I see the tail light came on, drops, the voltage drops a little bit. Horn works. See if a brake light, brake light's coming on. Uh, turn signals, pretty much got to put the, um, See the front turn cells working, so that's good. You gotta put the cowls on for the rear and sometimes those are temperamental. Um, you see a voltage drop. It even has a heated, uh, heated grips on there. It's probably the only vintage Vespa I know that has the heated grips on it. Um, gotta watch with the load. If you put too much load on these scooters, sometimes they don't charge all that well. Well, the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and start the scooter once again. And I want to see, make sure the battery is charging. You can stay on that side and then I'll get it started. So it starts nice and easy. There's no issues with the engine. And I'm gonna go back on this side and look at my meter, see if the smoke cloud. I just want to quickly check to make sure I'm charging. 12.85, it's already coming up. I see 12 point. If you rev it, it should even go higher. Yep, over 13 volts. Yeah, this thing's charging good, so no issues there. If you don't have a kill switch, you can you can hit the brake. And just as you hold the brake, shift into gear and let the clutch out. And that's one way to stall out the motor. Since it doesn't have a kill switch, I have a key handy. So the tires look to be in pretty good shape. They're just a little bit low. They're fairly new uh, Pirelli Angels. They're actually on tubeless rims. So I'm gonna go ahead and pump up the rear. I can definitely tell the rear is low before I go on a test ride. Uh, anytime I check out a vintage bike, I always wobble the rear. 
and make sure that the rim's not loose. And you may want to even pop the cap off, make sure the cotter pin's in place uh, that locks the nut. So definitely don't want 38 PSI. Let's say probably 28's like appropriate. So we're going to inflate the tires, Let's move on to the front. And a pump like this stops when it's at the set pressure. If you want to buy something like this on Scooter West, Tool-Air, pretty handy little pump to have. Put it in the glove box of the scooter. And the front tire, you don't quite want to go as high. Maybe 20 PSI is appropriate for the front tire. And go as low as 18. So I just got back from a test ride. I was kind of easy on the brakes. The brakes seemed to work okay. The tires are a little slick because I was sliding around a little bit. Um, other than that, it actually rode really good. The power's good. It's coming back to idle just fine. Kind of an indication it doesn't have any uh, air leaks on the engine that would cause idle issues or a worn piston. I mean, the compression's like just, just kicking it through. It feels like it's top notch, no reason to really inspect or take apart the top end. Um, pretty certain the oil injection is working fine. The line, I'll probably maybe save it for the next video. We'll replace the oil injection line. Probably put a new fuel line in just because. I'm gonna have it off, but I have a warmed up motor. I do wanna drop the gearbox oil. It's always best to do it with a warmed up motor. Kind of allow for any of the um, debris, the drop out. I got 11 millimeter socket. And there's, you can find that nut. And I got our uh, oil pan here, the low profile oil pan works really good for draining the oil into. Okay, so there you go, it drops out. It looks pretty clean, a little bit of me metal flakes in there and that's pretty normal. Um, as the clutch wears, it kind of leaves behind a lot of metal. Um, the drain bolt's kind of a mess. It may even be worth just putting a new one on there. There's so much goo on it. Uh, I can't even get the, the crush washer. You could reuse it. Probably a good idea just to replace it. We're going to go ahead and pull the fill. And I can't quite tell what the fill is because there's some goop, some silicone on there. Normally it's a flat blade screw. Use a large screw, but I can tell it's gonna be the, um, the 11 millimeter nut. I just need to get through the, the excess silicone that's been spread on this here. And I think I'm gonna do the same thing. Just, I'm gonna get a pair of new uh, drain and fill screws here. Use a little knife. If it does, somebody does something like add silicone, it, pretty easy to peel away. The holes look fine. I don't, the threads, I think they're fine. So it's pretty much drained the oil out. All right, so I got a new oil drain and you can also use this as the fill bolt. So part number is 138345. And then I got the crush washer, which is part number 000397. So I got those pair, put the crush washer on there. And if it is a little leaky, I would recommend not silicone, but a thread sealant. Something like this is really good. It's a pipe sealant. Uh, it's got like Teflon particles in it. And it doesn't really dry all the way, which is a good thing. So you could easily remove it. Unlike silicone kind of makes a big gooey mess. That's like kind of difficult to remove. So you could put a little bit of that on there. Um, if everything's in really good shape, like the cases aren't gouged or anything, it will seal just fine without any sealant, just a crush washer. So get that started. And you gotta be careful not to over tighten those. Uh, the drain, they only need like maybe seven foot pounds, just enough to seal 
uh, those threads are pretty fragile, usually in the cases. If they are stripped out, it is possible to fix them with the threaded insert. Um, so the next step, we're going to go ahead and refill the, the oil here. So originally they used like a non-detergent 30 weight motor oil, which is pretty difficult to find. Um, the recommendation is to use a specific oil that's designed for transmissions. It's essentially a motor oil that's designed for lubricating transmissions and it works and is compatible with the wet clutch that's found on these scooters. So I use like a squeeze bottle like this. You could use a, a ketchup or mustard thing that has a little spout on it. That's going to be helpful. And typically you don't measure into quantity. You just actually fill until it will dribble out of the, the bleeder here. So I'm just going to top off my container with this modal trans oil. If you're looking for this on a Scooter West web store, oil trans. We've been selling it for years. And obviously save the rest of the bottle. You get at least four oil changes or gear oil changes on a vintage Vespa with uh, a whole liter of that oil there. So, so go ahead and tip this up and just go ahead and squeeze. It goes in there pretty quick. Not bleeding out yet. Wait until it starts dribbling out of the... Have to be getting close. Just starting to... So there you go. It's dribbling out of the fill. And just like the drain, we're going to use the same style. Originally, they did have a nice little flat blade uh, screw for the fill. Um, I'd allow it to kind of dribble out a little bit further. You don't want to have an overfilled uh, gearbox. You end up just with more oil leaks and it may leak into the rear brakes, the hub. Um, you know, I kind of got a little overzealous and fill in it. So allow that to drain, then we'll go ahead and put the fill back in. So another option to fill or, or even pull some excess out, well, it's pretty much down to the point where it's just dribbling, is use a syringe. This works just as well. Uh, Scooter West part number is tool syringe. Obviously you're only going to get about 60 uh, milliliters per stroke, you know, uh, adding oil, but you know, maybe you overfilled it like I did a little bit. You can pull some out. You just want it right where it's just dribbling out of the hole. Like right now it's just too like a, an occasional drip and that's about as high as you want to have the gearbox oil. So go ahead and thread that in. Um, could use a seal in if you want. And I showed you this tool in the early step. Uh, that 11 millimeter does come in handy, you know, for a lot of the fasteners on the engine because they use 11. So you could use that on the side of the road if you need for some reason to drain or fill the gearbox with your um, toolkit that's with your scooter here. So. So after the little test ride, some other things I may consider doing is lubricating or replacing the cables. Uh, the shifting's a little on the stiff side. Uh, they have the original cable housings. This scooter has like 28,000 miles. I could tell they're original cable housings. Uh, some of you may have replaced that sheathing on there. Uh, even the rear brakes, likely the original uh, cable housing. Um, at minimum, you can lubricate the cables. There's ways to do that. Maybe save that for another video. Um, put the cows on them, make sure the turn sails work. And it's a combination of the hook and the little peg that makes a connection for your turn signals. Uh, take on a couple more test rides just to shake it down. Uh, make sure you always turn your fuel off to close. Um, otherwise you may end up with a flooded engine or a, a fuel leak. But it didn't really take much to get this thing going after sitting two, maybe three years. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com here in San Diego, California. I'll see you on the next one.